And every person is going to exhibit different character, their own unique characteristics and traits when they're in each of the quadrants, when they're dominant in each of the quadrants. So what we help people do in the 12 week process. Who I'm talking to? What am I talking to? Hey guys, to? welcome to this <laughs> I week's don't know. episode. You just say that every time. He has no idea what we record. We just get in front and then she asks me to start. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. It's always nonsense when it's him and I, but hopefully it, it, it gives you guys some laughter. Welcome to this week's episode. So we decided to do something really mm. special and unique, okay. which is give you... An now I remember. To give you... Yeah. Now, now can now you want to do the start? Right. To give you a deeper understanding of what we call quadrant theory, it's now the framework that we use. We teach in a teach it in a twelve week class that we take a small group through. We teach it at at our retreats, and really, it 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 stemmed from wanting some kind of a framework when using ketamine therapy, so that that it wasn't just the ketamine that they were actually using the ketamine. The ketamine actually promotes exactly what we're teaching in the quadrant theory. So we decided to do a four week special where we will take each week to dive into each quadrant. So this week we're just gonna give you a quick overview of what quadrant theory is, and then the following weeks we'll go into each quadrant. So do you, would you like to start, my dear? No, you should start and, and tell everybody really what the quadrant theory is, how, maybe how it came quickly how it came about and basically what the four quadrants are. Why, okay. why don't you start with that? Sure. So I follow, or I watched Jill Bolte Taylor's TED talk years and years and years ago, her very first TED talk where she, it's called my stroke of insight. She was a neuroanatomist, neuroscientist that in her early thirties ended up having a stroke, which was really unique because here she is a person that literally her whole life is dedicated to studying the brain. And as she's having the stroke, she's conscious and aware and she knows what's happening within her brain. It was one of the most watched TED Talks ever. I think it was like 15, I don't know, maybe even 20 years ago. And then more recently, she just wrote a book. And so she was doing some podcast episodes on her book. A friend sent it to me. And the theory was, her theory is the four characters of the brain. And basically, as a neuroanatomist, she was able to break down neurologically the different parts, the four different parts of our brain what what we use them for like what neural networks are responsible for certain parts and then she kind of broke them down into what she calls characters and so when i watched those two podcast episodes i was like it's really curious that the four characters kind of fits within other modalities that i had had studied and practiced one of them being open focus which i learned we learned from dr joe dispenza who uses it in his meditations, but I'd also study the flow cycle and it, and it mapped onto that. And then I was like, wait a minute. And so I started like really kind of going, I think this is a little bit bigger than just the four characters. I started looking at in nature, we actually, there, there, these, the four seasons fit into this, like, um, our horoscopes, astrology fit in, fits into this, our own biology fits into these four quadrants. And so I, you know, I was sort of loosely putting something together when I shared it with him. And then, you know, once we, once we started talking about it, it sort of expanded into a total framework for how we can bring balance essentially into our lives using all four of these quadrants, understanding how they work in our own lives. Um, wh how to create balance in each quadrant and then how to move through them using these other modalities. And so I sort of used the framework of the four characters, but then we really built something much more expansive on top of that. And so our 12 weeks is taking people through that process. Was that good? Perfect. All right. So now explain what, what are the names of each quadrant? So quadrant one, you could call it the doer or the ego either one of those, it's the thinking left hemisphere of the brain. So it's the part of your brain that is analytical. It's the part of your brain that is activated when you're learning something new. So there's 
you know, what we teach in our class is all the different chemicals and neurotransmitters that happen in your body when you're activating this neural network in, in quadrant one. So you're gonna be learning new things. It's the struggle phase of the flow cycle. So it's the first phase of the flow cycle, it's struggle. You're in a narrow focus. So when we're talking about the open focus method, there's four styles of paying attention. Quadrant one is like narrow focused. So you're usually trying to solve a problem. You're doing your taxes, you're learning how to ski, you know, what that aspect of you that's like the doer, the get shit done, and the ego. And so same side of the brain, below that is quadrant two. What is quadrant two? Quadrant two you could call the wounded child. You can also call the empath because you can, you're very empathetic in quadrant two. This is the emotional limbic system of the brain. It thinks in terms of past and future. So it's always focused on the, the past or always focused on the future. It's where we store our memories. It's all, also where we store meaning to certain things. So when you hear coaches and teachers talk about your subconscious beliefs, that's sort of stored in that quadrant too. Also, if, if you're in the spiritual space, it's where you go to do what a lot of people call shadow work. So where you're doing a lot of that deep emotional healing. So next over to the right side, there is quadrant three. So quadrant three would be the playful child. It would be the part of your, your, the, your brain that's completely in the present. And so one of the, the other modalities that we use within this is David Hawkins' scale of consciousness. And so on the scale of consciousness, when we're talking about vibration and emotion, quadrant three would be love. Literally, it would be love. So you think of your body's producing oxytocin when you're activating this side of your brain. It's, it's the child, it's the adventurous child, the one that wants to hang out with their friends and, and you're, you're fiery. So it's the fire element of the earth and, and the fire signs that are associated with the fire element. So usually you're, you're spontaneous, you're not afraid to be around people. You can talk in front of people, you know, think of a little kid, like they'll say, you're fat and they don't really care, right? So that's, that describes that part of the brain. In the moment. In the moment. So above that, there is the big one, quadrant big four. One, what one. is, what is quadrant four? So quadrant four, you can think of as the sage, the wisdom keeper, the quantum, the, the, the universal you. So there is no ego. There is no, there is no part of you that exists as separate then it's the universal consciousness it's god consciousness essentially but it's wisdom so if you think of the little child in quadrant three that's just playful wants to play but doesn't have any wisdom because it doesn't live in past or future quadrant four is really where you bring the balance in with wisdom you learn discernment as opposed to judgment you're connected so why this is all important is because when we it's it seems funny but when we map you and we find out who you are we know what quadrant you're coming from somebody coming from quadrant four who was very you know into the mystical they they don't necessarily have lots of money they don't they they, they struggle with certain ego things and so it, it again the goal is to balance right your quadrant three you're always playing you, you know you may say the wrong things to certain people you're in the moment you know you you love to take risk and adrenaline junkie all that is can be a little too much even when you are in a like an, a professional athlete but that is in constant flow that can be too much because the body and mind need to rest so if you get stuck in quadrant three it it has its distractions as well right or detractions mm -hmm. detractions yeah yeah yes that's the right word yeah but so in quadrant two you can get stuck in the poor me you can get stuck in it's all their fault it's the government's fault it's my ex's fault it's my parents fault because i am the way i am it can be a victim consciousness and it can be a very very victim consciousness consciousness um quadrant one entrepreneur that's the one that's going for it i got to go out there and i'm gonna make it happen it's whether the buy it's buy me level of consciousness buy me level of consciousness no now if you get stuck and you just by those descriptions you can kind of have an idea of where you land right so but the ultimate deal is to really get fully aware of where you are and then how do we regulate it this is where the ketamine comes in so i want you to picture four tanks 
and look at them as though they have a, a level in them of water, okay? The more water, the more, the, the higher level of the tank, the more full of the tank, the better, right? It, so if you are a quadrant one and you're not, you're not in quadrant two that much because you're not a victim. No, I do it all myself. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go get it. it. It's all up to me. It's like I, Tony Robbins. Yeah, right? I'm doing it, <laughs> yeah. man. You are going to have a very high level in one and probably a very level in two. Uh, same thing on quadrant four. If you are all universal, all God consciousness, I'm just going to sit back and meditate my, my, my taxes away. Chances are it's not going to work because you're really high in that level. And like we said before, a lot of times there is, you are in a universal God consciousness because ultimately that's what we are, but you live in a human environment, a human body. So you have to have four and it's great to have four just as it is one, but you got to be able to equalize it because you have to live in a human experience. You need money to transact. So there's this equalizing that needs to happen. So this is why, you know, we love, you know, the ketamine to be the regulator of the flow that directs the water. So what does that mean? You have a six inch pipe that comes up that is going to feed these tanks. And for the first 40 years of your life, you lived in quadrant two and all of that water that came in that six inch pipe just dumped right into two. It didn't go, it splashed over into one a little bit, it splashed over to four and three, but most of its flow got stuck and it went into that. It can happen with four, it can happen with three, it can split and do two and four at the same time. What ketamine does is it is a foolproof regulator that goes into that six inch pipe of energy, conscious energy, right? And it then takes all of that flow of energy and it splits it equally. And it tells you, this is the magic. It tells you when you are in a quadrant two state, you become aware. Suddenly you don't feel, you know, oh, you start having that conversation in your mind, right? You're, you're, you're maybe a little lethargic. You're not in, you're not in the play state. You're not in the meditative state and you're not in the doing state. You're kind of in the sit back and recovery state. We call that the recovery quadrant. So you're in that recovery state. You now know where you are and you may say, you know, to your spouse and say, listen, I'm sorry. I'm just in quadrant two right now. I'm in the recovery phase. I can't have that conversation or I can't take little Johnny to soccer tonight. I need to recover. Yeah. Right? So you know where you are and then what do you need? Well, you need to be in that recovery state, number one. You have to be there because you are, you are recovering. Just like a wave, right? The wave goes up and then it comes down. And in that down, it's going to recover up again. Same exact thing. That works for every single quadrant. So when you're in it, you know you're in it. And then the best part is you have tools to then get out of that quadrant to help kind of lift you up into maybe quadrant four. Maybe that's the next level. Maybe by doing something, that's the next level, quadrant one, right? So that is why we use ketamine to help regulate those tanks so you can live an equal life and you can be aware of where you stand in those quadrants. So if you understand where you are in those quadrants, you also will understand where your partner is in those quadrants. You'll understand where your mother was in those quadrants. And suddenly all those things that she did to you, suddenly you start to realize, oh, mom was in a quadrant too most of her life. And now I understand why she was in such pain and she would say those things to me because she couldn't get into a quadrant three. It wasn't there for her. The flow was stuck this way and it wasn't going this way. That is a key to recovery. It is a key to healing when you understand that the people that have been around you, what quadrant they were in, and then you can map why they were there by looking at their lives, their parents, their environments. Yeah, and the 
the way we use open focus in in this quadrant theory is the four styles of paying attention and once you learn like he said the reason why we utilize ketamine in the process is because ketamine is the regulator so it's going to bring like he i love the analogy of the tank so if you think of ketamine it's naturally rising all of the levels of those four tanks or four quadrants to make them more balanced and the more that you do that your nervous system actually wants to cycle through these different styles of paying attention in the different quadrants just like the flow cycle just like the four levels of consciousness just like the seasons just like the elements that we have mapped under each of those quadrants so once you actually bring more balance into the literally these four parts of your brain you naturally can trust the cycle to naturally move. So when you're in your, your recovery, you know you're in recovery, you know you're in quadrant two, you know you need to take some time to just go internal. You're not freaking out, you know what's happening. You will naturally move out of it and go back into a quadrant one, which is struggle in the doing. And then from there you'll go into release, which is quadrant three. And then from there you'll go to the flow, which is quadrant four, and then you'll come back down. And you're able to move through these cycles with more consistency, more regularity, more peace, right? You have more peace more in your life, more awareness, more balance as you learn to navigate that. And every person is gonna exhibit different character, their own unique characteristics and traits when they're in each of the quadrants, when they're dominant in each of the quadrants. So what we help people do in the 12 week process is like he said, to map that personally for them. Okay, here's how I think, how I feel, how I act. Here's the chemicals that are going through my body. Here's the behavior I'm exhibiting when I'm in each quadrant. So like he says, there's no guessing. Oh, look it, I have a map no. in front of me. I'm in quadrant two right yeah. now. Okay. You know. Exactly. So then you can go, okay, do I trust the cycle to let myself naturally move out of it? Or maybe I've been kind of hanging out in quadrant three a little too long. What are, now that we have ways to bring balance into each of them, ketamine being obviously the big one, but then also we offer different tools throughout those, those 12 weeks for each quadrant. But then also on top of that, I'm gonna have a map that says, eh, I've been hanging out three too long. What are quadrant one activities that I can do so that I can start tapping into that more regularly. And like he said, this is this will fundamentally shift your relationships. It has oh, for us. Oh my God. Because we have a framework and understanding. Hey, I'm in one, I'm, I'm getting my shit done. Hey, I'm in four, I'm super spiritual. Hey, I'm in three. Mm -hmm. and, and either I can join him in three or not. We can mm -hmm. make that decision, but we can have an understanding of each other and then, and then talk about that as opposed to being like, why is he being like that? Mm -hmm. Why is he acting like that? Why does he not like understand that. that? Or he's always like he's that. He's always been that way. And that's the thing we start to realize when you get stuck in a quadrant one, me being a business owner and, and he's a natural born quadrant I'm one. I'm a natural born right? quadrant one. I love to play. Yeah. And you know, I was a carpenter and, and being a carpenter, it was kind of like play to me. It was so much fun. I love to be in the present moment of doing certain things, you know, but then I made it a business and then it, it suddenly pulled but actually, all that up the, into one. The, being the natural born quadrant one is what allowed you to become an entrepreneur. 100%. A natural born uh, quadrant three oh, is going to find it really hard uh -huh. to build a business. Oh, and that's what I say. Yeah. I, I love to play, but I am a natural quadrant one because yeah. then I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. For I have sure. that. An entrepreneur is quadrant one. Yeah. They have that mindset. Oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to make this and I'm going to create this, you know, and it's, it's very planned out and I, it's, it, it can be worth, uh, you know, yeah. like a worth basis. It can. So my dad said I was a piece of shit and I'm, I, I said, no, I'm not. And I'm going to prove to you why I'm not. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to make, I'm going to shake and bake things. Mm -hmm. I'm going to yes. shake and bake. I'm going to make lots and lots of money. I'm going to have lots of value and I'm going to prove you wrong. That's absolutely fantastic. But at the same time, at what cost? If you're always doing that and you don't play, right? You get wrapped up That's in right. all the problems of it. And what does a doer do with problems? Tries to solve them. Yep. Right? So we try to step away from it and, you know, we become quadrant four. This is mind over matter. This yeah. is, I draw things to me. So now suddenly this entrepreneur is used to doing all things. Mm. I'm going to say, okay, can we step back a little bit? Can you go and play for a little mm. while to put this on rest? Mm. 
So now this can percolate and your silent business partner, the universe, Quadrant 4, mm. can help you solve that problem. Now, how does it solve that problem? It brings the person towards you that maybe mm. can solve it. It may be, I got to go and find this client that has this, this, and this. And then finally you say, okay, universe, this is what I need. You focus on it. You, pre you, you have the pretendness of pretendness. Pretendous. You have the imagery of having that client come to you, what it's going to feel like inside. Like, mm -hmm. you know, imagine you telling your wife, oh my God, you're not going to believe what happened to me today. I had this thought and suddenly it just showed up. Mm -hmm. Happens to us all the time. So what we try to do is teach that person to say, okay, now it, you got to let it percolate now. You, if you keep doing, you're going to keep getting in the way. Mm -hmm. You're just getting in your way constantly mm -hmm. and you will never be able to see the answer. Mm -hmm. Let the answer come to you. For it to come to you, you got to step out of it. You got to let go of it. You have to surrender. You hear that all the time. You have to just step out of the energy of I need this because when you need this, you're always going to need that. But when you say, okay, I'm going to surrender to it and let the universe bring it into my view, that's how it works. So we got to get out of that quadrant. And that's what we work on. That's what we show you how to do that. Yeah, I mean, literally on your map. So we don't just say go into quadrant three. We, we give you specific tools, sustainable tools, the most important. So you're not doing 50 million things. You're doing two things that, that you're adding in that are, are not a big deal that you know, hey, this activates my quadrant three. So you use specific, tangible, sustainable tools in each of those quadrants. I think the other important thing that we say all the time, and I think this is where people really are like, oh yeah, I get it, is that all four quadrants are necessary and important. Yes. They all have amazing characteristics. Yes. They all have amazing you need them all. attributes. We need them all. You, you have the left side all. of the brain, which is the science, yep. the individual, the human part of us that's expanding and growing. And then you have the soul side of us. Mm -hmm. and, and really, quadrant theory is bringing both of those things to the table. It's saying one's not important than the other. We actually need to bring them together to have a full picture of the human yes. experience. It is only ever just yep. a volume issue yep. in each quadrant. Yep. That's it. That's the only problem. Yep. So. You heard her. We're going to come on and we are going to walk you through each one of the quadrants, what they are, what they rhyme with. Like quadrant one is what season then? Quadrant one would be spring. Okay. And quadrant three would be what season then? Quadrant three is summer. summer. And then quadrant, this uh, winter time would be then what quadrant? What do you think winter time is? I think winter time would be, well, I don't know. Well, obviously it's winter time is quadrant two. Yes, because it's recovery, right? Everything is recovery. The, the plants are recovering, the trees are recovering, everything. but I don't know. The dot, well, yeah, because autumn would be quadrant four, yep. and that is kind of the dot. I love how you say autumn. And I not say fall. autumn. <laughs> I say autumn. I speak yeah. with a very high, resolute yeah. voice. Yeah. Anyway, I think that pretty much wraps it up. Yes? Yeah, we're, we actually are going to start our next class on November 7th, so that's why we want to put out this series and, and give you guys a sneak peek into what you're going to be learning. We take a group through the whole process, so it's yes. not like people are just signing up anytime. These are, these are live together. calls yeah. that get recorded, and again, everything is there. It, it's, it's a 12 week this is the way how i like to look at it it's a 12 week retreat yeah <laughs> right yeah it's an at home yeah. 12 week retreat we yeah. have all the same things we do at our retreat we yeah. have we have our providers they're on the calls we the and the community absolutely is mind-blowing because it of the wins that happen yeah. for everybody clarity it's lots just and amazing. lots of clarity just people amazing. get so yeah. if you have questions put it in the comments or you can reach out to us. I do want to say you don't have to use ketamine in the process. You no. can just go through the 12 week yeah, process. We've, we've had, had people do that. So yeah, um, that's not, it's not a requirement. So yeah. yeah, if you have questions, put it in the comments. All of our contact info will be in the description. So if you want to know more, we actually did an hour long webinar. I'll put the link in the description. It's a little outdated because we did it for our last class. We plan on doing a new one. However, it will give you some information, but the easiest thing is just to reach out and schedule a, a call and we can dive into it. With you. So look out for these next videos because they are going to walk you through what we teach in our course. Yeah. Obviously we go much further, but in our course, what we teach of the beginnings of understanding what the quadrant theory is, what each quadrant represents to see if you fit and where you fit. You definitely fit in one of those boxes. So you can see how regulated you are. Mm.
right? Mm -hmm. And it'll help you understand your spouse. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a big one. And mm -hmm. also your relationship because you could probably map that relationship right. as well. Mm -hmm. So we will see you in the next video and it will be called Quadrant One, the winter. Quadrant Two is the winter. Oh, that's right. All right, let me restart. <laughs> Quadrant One, the spring. There we go. All right. Get out there and garden. Love you guys. Next time.